Check this out. It's an interesting new axe. I'm gonna have some fun with. If you know, you know. I mean, there's exhibit A. Exhibit B. <laughs> clunk, clunk, clunk. Exhibit C. A little smaller pick guard. Exhibit D. If you know, you know. Exhibit E. Exhibit F. G. Now there's this interesting sticker thing over the headstock. Wondering if this is even removable, and if so, it begs the question, are we going to see what we're expecting to see beneath that sticker? We shall see. Oh, looky there. Nice. So yeah, there it is. Upon closer inspection, you just, you know, try to see how good or bad these really are. Let's check the fret ends for sharpness. That actually feels pretty good. I think some of the Epiphones have been worse with their sharp fret ends compared to this. I got this from California. Even included a really cheap little cable and an Allen key for the truss rod because, of course, these never have the proper acorn nut. <laughs> and we got this little little care instructions sheet. Not sure if this is proper English or broken English. I guess we'll look at it later. But again, it's, you know, when you get these things, you basically just end up gutting most of the parts. So, yeah, I've got Grover Rotomatics for these. Tusk XL nut to put in. I imagine the Epiphone one would probably fit, or you could make it fit. Uh, I don't have replacement pickups yet. I'm trying to find a good deal and see what's out there. I might try to see about getting a larger pick guard for this. This thing's got Gibson branding on it. Then I've got a roller bridge to try to put on here with this thing. I guess the spacing on these is decent enough. I've seen some of them where this I don't know, the controls here and the pick guard and switch were all crammed really close together to the point where there wasn't even space to put the poker chip. I might just briefly tune it up and see how bad the frets are as far as if it needs leveling and crowning and all that stuff. Alright, here's a different point of view. Just get some close-ups of it across the camera lens. Now on this one, it's hard to even tell how much fret buzz there is because it's just got a really cheap tunematic style bridge with the retainer wire that rattles like crazy, so it's hard to even... I do kind of like the neck profile on this. It's it's not too slim or too fat. It's kind of got a nice round profile without being flat across the back. I don't really like such a flat profile, but this is pretty nice. Like, yeah, look. Just really rough frets.
and then you can like dive bomb with this thing and see how badly it goes out of tune. See the end of this just popped off. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Like it doesn't, it doesn't curve along with the shape of the guitar, it just goes like wah. Like how it just goes like this. That's a bit odd. So there we have it. I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. Stay tuned for more on this thing. Um, should be fun to tinker with anyway and see how good we can make it. So this is the cheap little bridge. See you can just shake this by hand and it's making a ton of noise. So this is rubbish. There's this flimsy retainer wire that's not even tight. Here's the first tuner. Again, no branding. I've always preferred the Grover tuners to the Cluson style ones with the tulip buttons. So, I don't have any intention of reusing these. Just pitch them. <laughs> and then I'll have to get these little bushing things out. Well, there we go. Really didn't take much effort to get these little bushing things out. I basically just put one flathead screwdriver up against the edge and whacked the top with another screwdriver and they just popped right out. Alright, we got a plastic film over the rear cavity cover. Kind of weird. There we go. Good lord. Yeah, look at all, like, wow. Look how careless this is. It's like all this sawdust or whatever the hell's in here. So yeah, we got the little dime-sized pots. The cheap green poly caps. I'm sure that's a crappy output jack and a crappy little switch. So anyway, I obviously want to make this nicer. Just put in a switchcraft jack and the shorter switch, and then CTS pots and orange drop caps. Uh, what do we got? I don't see any branding embossed in the back of this. It's just plain, pretty much. And then there's some kind of number in there. N10. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Probably just garbage again. So I don't know. I might just take off all this hardware for now and put it in a Ziploc bag or something. And then just decide later what to keep and what to just replace. Alright, the rest of this is getting stripped down some more. I mean, the routes look clean. It's just quickly thrown together with all the sawdust and then in here we've got... Is there a Chinese name? <laughs> Does, is there a uh, Mr. Mr. Name? Chinese name? Troy, Chinese name is not here. Whatever that says. Like, it's funny that they even put protective plastic film over the little poker chip. Alright, I guarantee you I'll have to ream these holes out bigger to fit CTS pots in. And these pickups will honestly probably just go in the trash. Obviously they're not even wax potted or anything. Now I just want to double check these posts or studs or whatever you want to call them. See if they're even the same thread. Not too sure. This metal feels really cheap. Yeah, I guess these should fit. Yeah, 
I don't know how much I'll end up liking this bridge, but I'll at least try it out. Then I've got my 18 to 1 Grover Rotomatics, which I'm pretty comfortable with. So I usually put these on most Gibsons and Epiphones and stuff. So I guess I can work on that now and then the nuts gotta go. I got these reamed out by hand. Holes look a little jaggy like they usually do, but I just hate trying to use a drill for this because the torque can definitely damage things and, you know, just go nuts. So I've always just done this by hand. There we go. Alright, I've got two of these tusk nuts from GraphTech. They're both supposed to fit Epiphones. I'm not sure if there's a difference between them, even though I think there's different part numbers. It's already got a pretty decent fit. That might almost just drop right in. Even on some Epiphones and stuff, I've had to file these down quite a bit. All right, today's Monday, July 3rd. So happy premature forth to everyone in the U.S. out there. I received all my pickups today. So I scored a Gibson Burstbucker Pro rhythm pickup for the neck position. It's just a used one made in 2008. And then for the bridge position I got a Tone Rider Birmingham Alnico 5 humbucker. Not sure if either of these are wax potted. Maybe this Gibson one is. I'm not sure about this one. But I'm still excited to put these in. This one's for conductor. Don't really care too much about the coil tap stuff anymore. Alright, well I've skipped ahead a little bit. Got the other pickups around, got them all mounted and installed in the body. Then I've got this other 5 ply pick guard fitted. I'm just waiting on some brown kiwi shoe polish to arrive. It's on the way, so I can try to stain this to get it more of a cream color instead of that bright white. It doesn't quite look right against the rest of it. Right now I've got pickups are mounted, got a nice switchcraft switch in there, and what else? I want to put CTS pots in here, so typically the cheap pots have much smaller mounting holes than the shafts of the CTS pots, so I'm going to need to ream these by hand most likely. Well, I've run into my first craftsmanship issue. The big CTS pots here. The bridge volume hole is drilled a little bit too close to the edge of this cavity wall in here so this isn't gonna fit all the way down in there. Alright, kind of ugly but just got my three pound sledge and a screwdriver and Kind of chiseled a notch out of here, so hopefully that's just enough to fit this in there and then it's not up so high that it's blatantly obvious when the pot's actually populated in. Okay, the pots are loosely fitted for now. Um, I'm going to work on starting some of the wiring in here, especially the tone caps. So I've got the orange drop 0.022 microfarad caps and I'm going to do the 50s wiring like I usually do in most of my guitars as opposed to a more modern or traditional type of wiring style. I like the control you have with the 50s wiring so when you roll down the volume it's more usable instead of completely dying when it's turned below like eight so you get more usable volume and it doesn't just die if it's not on 10 and 
just going to look that up to double check the diagram and stuff like that and we'll go from there. But I also need to thoroughly go through and ground everything so I have a tendency to do all the ground wires last but this time it might be interesting to do those first so I don't just make a total mess of everything. Well, I probably got more than half the wiring done off camera, but anyway, the hole for the output jack also needs to be enlarged <coughs> slightly for the switchcraft jacks. So I'm going to have to ream that out.